tune with some uh, continental <laughs> railroad called Pedals. Now we're going to play a West Montgomery tune, Road Song.
Alexander on bass. Emily Rimmler will be joining me in the studio and we'll be featuring her and her music for the rest of the hour on 540 CJSB, The Guitar Corner. Emily Rimmler, unique individual. What do you do when you're not playing guitar? Just sitting around relaxing and shopping. Shopping? <laughs> no. Swimming, reading, listening to music, um, being married, and um, making telephone calls. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do a lot of traveling, so you have to do a lot of telephone. Yes, uh, AT&T has definitely benefited by, by my use of long distance. All these things that you're doing, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to be playing guitar 24 hours a day. Well, that's, that's a myth. That's what I say. I believe in other life experiences, and I cannot sit in one position and play the guitar for 24 hours a day. There have been times that I have practiced profusely, um, especially between... My age is 16 and 18. I, I just uh, couldn't wait to get home to transcribe the next Wes Montgomery solo. But lately, when I'm playing at night especially, I just relax and go to movies. I forgot to mention that. I'm an avid moviegoer. And television. Things like that. And um, just sort of live life. Well, that's good. That's a, it's sort of a, a contradiction on the kind of music that you're playing. Because the, the kind of music that you're playing or emulating from the old masters are from people who devoted their own entire lives to it. Well, and also there's another thing that uh, you also have to suffer during that time. So I'm sure they spent some time suffering rather than practicing. And you're not suffering? Not very much at all, especially sitting here in this nice hotel room and thinking about ordering Eggs Benedict. And but that's no, you're supposed to suffer, and you're supposed, that's where you get your soul. Where does it come from then? <laughs> this is a good one. Well, I'm Jewish, and <laughs> we suffer... <laughs> is this okay to say? No, um, I think that whole thing is a myth. Of course I've done some suffering in my time, 26 years of suffering. But um, that's a definite myth. And I think musicians like Pat Metheny have proven things like that. And he's as young and wholesome. I mean, the man has never drank a full glass of wine. And so uh, the myth of being alcoholics and drug addicts and down-and-out jazz musician was mainly in the 40s and 50s, and it's sort of passe. And people are realizing, which is very good, that you don't have to do all that suffering to be able to play the blues. And besides paying your dues, uh, handling music business is certainly paying your dues. You certainly go through a lot of changes with booking agents and managers and things like that. So, Well, I say you're unique because... Here you are, you're 26 year old, years old, you're young, you're also a woman in a fairly male-dominated area, and yet you're, you're playing music of, uh, of people who have been around for a long time. You're almost a throwback. Do you, do you feel that you're living in the wrong era? Well, you forgot beautiful <laughs> when you were speaking about me. But, uh, I took that for granted, I'm sorry. I forget that we're on radio. That's right, I'll forgive you. Um, what it is is basically I have tremendous respect for, for the legendary jazz musicians. I have tremendous respect. At one point, I had a picture of Wes Montgomery on my wall, and I felt that he was watching me practice. But um, in the days of, in the 50s and 60s, the musicians could go to 52nd Street in New York and all sit in and see John Coltrane and Charlie Parker play and things like that, and uh, sit in. But nowadays, we young musicians have to learn from records. So I've learned a lot from listening to records, and I've tried to um, associate with people like Hank Jones and I've gotten a lot out of just talking to people like that to feel the general feeling of how the music is played and I have tremendous respect as I said and try to do things right I don't play a Charlie Parker tune and turn my volume up to 10 and use a phase shifter and uh, rush the notes and things like that I try to play it in the traditional way when I'm playing that type of music here again you're sort of uh, treading that the two sides of the coin here you're, you're of the new generation you mentioned the people like Pat Metheny and you get Al Dimiola and a lot of other young jazz guitarists who are sort of combining rock and jazz and we come up with fusion right. and yet you you can swing you swing like Barney Kessel and, and Herb Ellis and Tal Farlow and Wes Montgomery 
There seems to be a contradiction here. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I regard that as a compliment about the swinging part. And as I said, when I'm playing that type of music, I try to play it as authentically as possible. But it seems like the tunes I write are more like Pat Metheny's and John McLaughlin's, although I've, r I've written some bebop tunes. And I am in between, and I've had, I've had to actually think of what direction I want to go to. And um, I'm sort of a Jacqueline of all trades, so to speak. I noticed that in listening to you, your records, and, and seeing you in concert, I hear so many things in there, yeah. and I'm wondering, what do you want to be when you grow up? I know. <laughs> I'm a total melting pot. I really don't know. All I know is that I love so many types of music. I'm not that crazy, folks, about country western. That's one thing I've never put my heart and soul into learning. But rhythm and blues I love. Um, I, I played rock and roll for a long time. All those things have to be inside someplace. And then I figure uh, at a certain age, maybe five, ten years or something, maybe it will really come into one certain style. But right now, if you want to categorize different types of playing, I'm probably moving from category to category, from tune to tune, even from measure to measure. You're listening to Guitar Corner on 540 CJSB Ottawa. This is Ken Clark, and I'm speaking with Emily Remler. Emily, let's go back a little bit in time. How did all this, how did this all begin for you? What kind of guitar influences did you have, or why did you pick up the guitar? Well, I was mostly like a normal kid, picked playing the guitar, folk guitar. I started about 10 years old, and I always had to be the best in my little folk guitar class. Um, I strummed great. My mother thinks I sing very well, but no one out there will ever hear me sing. Um, until about 14 or 15, I became a total rock fan, and uh, Johnny Winter, Jimi Hendrix, the Rolling Stones, things like that. Although I still couldn't play it on the guitar, I, I would attempt with one finger on one string, I could play these Eric Clapton solos, which is amazing to me to this day. But um, the thing I noticed about myself was that I could sing all the parts in the record. And I got into Indian music, Ravi Shankar. I could sing a whole raga. I could sing the, all the improvisation parts. So there was something up there. There was something about my memory. I found that I had a good uh, memory for music, which, which all a good ear really is, in my opinion, is the memory. So it was pretty abnormal, or super normal, whatever you want to call it. So that was the direction I had to go, because I just had to do something with that. And uh, that's how I went. Actually, I was also an artist, and the day came whether, whether I had to decide to go to art school or music school, and I went to music school. You went to Berkeley, and was that a good experience for you, since you were probably one of the few females in the class, especially yes. guitar class? Yes, and that was pretty interesting. Forty girls and two thousand males. When you lit a cigarette, I mean, you had twelve matches thrown at you. Um, it was nice. It was perfect for me, because I was a beginner. They made me use a pick. I'd, I'd played folk before and some rock with that one finger thing I told you about. And I hated jazz. I thought it was corny. Miles Davis scared me to death. Um, but a friend of mine, Chuck Loeb, who played with Stan Getz, a fine guitarist, gave me some West Montgomery records and some Pat Martino records. And I just went nuts. Actually, one of the first people I could relate to in a jazz way was Paul Desmond, because he was so melodic and motific, and I could understand that. But I can totally sympathize with people that don't like jazz because it sounded like a bunch of notes to me at the time. And I already had a good ear. I didn't understand what they were doing. But it's sort of like olives with acquired taste. And, and I listened more and more. And now I love John Coltrane. Now I understand his stuff. But um, at first, Charlie Christian, Paul Desmond, um, and w then Wes Montgomery, and Pat Martino was so amazing to me because it didn't even sound like a guitar. It was so perfect and smooth. And that's where I wanted to go, that area. We're speaking with Emily Remler on Guitar Corner at 540 CJSB Ottawa. Emily, um, let's talk a little bit about your equipment. I know there's some interesting stories about why you don't use a full-bodied, um, traditional jazz guitar. Well, actually, I love the sound of that. And um, I love the pop and the percussionist sound. I tried to get that sound when I bought my George Benson GB10. That had the pop sound I like. By pop, I meaning a, a percussive sound, and it had a warm bass sound. But I could only get that sound from it. I couldn't get any sustained things when I wanted to play the more modern things. So I went back to my original Gibson ES-330, which my brother gave me, and I think it's a 62, I'm not even sure. And um, I couldn't use the fat guitars because my right arm was cut off at the 
bicep muscle point where I just got very tired picking. It took me a while to realize what was going on with that. But it was just much more comfortable to use this thin body guitar. And I try to get a nice warm sound out of it, even though it is basically a rock guitar. I try to get a jazz sound out of it. And it's also the touch that matters anyway. How about strings and picks and amplifiers and other hardware that uh, everyone is interested in? Well, um, the strings I get for free, so I use those. Deodarios, jazz lights. I used to use heavy strings, and then I decided, why kill myself? And when I switched to the lights, my technique improved immensely, immediately. So I used those, and um, as far as picks, I have a problem with that, because I use the heaviest pick made, and a lot of places don't have it, and I, I need some more, because I'm always losing them. I used ones, I think they say 1.21 millimeters on them. I used to use a piece of wood, which is one way I met Herb Ellis, by giving him one of my wooden picks made out of a ruler which gave a very soft, beautiful sound, but you could not go very fast with it. Then I used a piece of Tupperware, plastic, and um, I've tried different things, but now I've settled on the Fender USA 121 millimeter pick there, and uh, I have to get some new ones. So if anybody out there knows where I can get a lot of them, uh, please write me. Amplifiers, what do you prefer? Well, I have a Polytone Mini Brute 1, which I've had for about five years. And basically, I use that because I cannot carry anything else. But I prefer twin reverb, especially an old twin reverb. I love this. So you like tube opposed to solid state? Oh, I love I love tube. As I said, the polytone is good, but um, I can't get the sound. And of course, mine doesn't have reverb. And uh, as I said, I can't pick up anything else. You know, when I go to a gig, I've got the guitar strapped over one arm and the the mini brute over the other carrying it so that's how i get to gigs otherwise i have to ask strangers in the street to help me get it out of the car so it's it's much more convenient but one of these days i'm going to get a twin reverb when i get a roadie someone to move me around emily remler on guitar corner from 540 cjsb emily let's talk a little bit about uh, the fact that you are a young woman and uh, the whole field of music is opening up to women mm -hmm. now uh, not so much in the jazz field as the rock and roll field. And, and I'm wondering uh, why you wouldn't be involved in, in some of the, the great press that some of the female rock and roll bands are getting and what, what uh, credibility some of the rock female guitarists are getting. Why are you staying in a, in a traditionally male field? And, and possibly more money. Yes, well, that has never been one of my big uh, on the top of the list. Um, as a teenager, I had fantasies about being a rock guitar player, and uh, I had, in my mind, I was to wear gloves with the fingers exposed, and I did actually play, when I first moved to New York and did every gig I could, I played in a punk rock band called The Stereotypes, and they put pink dust in my hair and, and things like that, and I played a Les Paul. But um, it seems like when you are into jazz like I am, there's no turning back, and you really can't put your heart and soul into rock and money and things like that if you're a pure jazz lover which i am and um as far as women in jazz i'm not acquainted with that many women other women jazz players it's funny because people say well do you know so and so she plays this and that and i don't know anybody i'm not hooked up with that circuit um all i know is that if there's a woman that can play drums as great as terry clark your brother can play them i'll use her on a gig Otherwise, I'm just using musicians, and when I'm playing, I don't know whether I'm a girl, boy, dog, cat, or whatever. I'm just playing the music, and when I leave the stage, that's when people remind me that I'm a woman. <laughs> but um, it's very strange. I don't know why there's not more girl guitar players, per se. Well, what suggestions would you have for anyone listening right now who is an aspiring guitarist, a jazz guitarist? Well, as we talked before the interview, um, I've thought about this a great deal. Now, my first few years of playing, when I had, had a, a need for experience and I was just coming up, um, there was a lot of intimidation and there was a lot of me having to prove myself, but my will was so strong and my desire to play. Sometimes I'd go sit in and I'd be sitting there the whole night when some guy who wasn't as good or whatever would get up there and play. but. I didn't let those things bother me to the point that I stopped playing. I just was very determined to show people. And that, that was sort of a competitive edge when I first got out of Berkeley. I'll show those guys. I'll act sweet and innocent and then I'll blow them away type of thing. But now I don't have that because that is just useless with music. 
But um, I think maybe a lot of women experience that intimidation and don't keep going, maybe. I don't know, because there's certainly nothing physical stopping them, and there's certainly uh, no lack of conviction with women, but it's, it's um, notorious that women might not have the conviction they might play lighter they might not have as good time who knows what it is but um there should be more coming up i suppose as far as advice to women just just keep going and keep playing and don't think about whether you're a woman and whether so-and-so is going to like you but then it's also the same to men you know we're all intimidated at the beginning sitting in and proving yourself and things like that and then uh, you have to work very hard and you have to experience a lot of music and a lot of life situations and then there's the music business. That's another area that I've been learning for the past few years. <laughs> well, if you're playing uh, the way you're playing now and progressing at the same rate by 55, you are going to be the legend that others are going to try and emulate. <laughs> well, that would be nice. It would be nice. 26, let me see. 27, I'd prefer it at 27, Ken, but 55 if you want to say, oh, of course I'll be so ugly and dried up that... <laughs> no, actually, well, thank you very much. That's really a nice thing to say. I'm... And thank you, Emily Remley. Thank you, Ken.